Amen. Praise God. Today, saints, we're going to we're going to discuss a start a new series. Out, probably it's a new message, a new series, and we'll see how much God does and how far He takes us. But the title is the mindset for triumph. The mindset for triumph. Amen. The mindset for triumph. You know what the mind is, and God is showing us that there's a mindset that will lead us into triumph. Triumph is defined as to obtain victory, uh, to prosper, or to flourish, to obtain victory, to prosper, or to flourish. Amen? Amen. Before I get started, a, a scripture just jumped out in my spirit. Might be put up uh, Isaiah 55 for the Message Bible. Message Bible. 55 verse uh, 7. 7 through 9, I think. Go. Message Bible. Okay. This is what God's saying. God say, this is talking to us, eh? let the wicked abandon their way of life and the evil their way of thinking and let them come back to God who is merciful and come back to our God who lavish in forgiveness with forgiveness. Check what's out. He said, I don't think the way you think. The way you work is not the way I work. God's decree. For as the sky soars high above the earth, so the way I work surpasses the way you work, and the way I think is beyond the way you think. So that's God's word to us, to Christians, to people. Amen? So most people think they're smarter than God. They want God to come down to their level of doing things, operating and they miss out on the benefits of what God has promised us. But the key I'm finding out is to find out how God thinks. And he shows us how he thinks in the Bible. And to show how, and see how he works. He shows us in the Bible how he works and how he thinks. And to assume the position that he has. To elevate our thoughts and our actions up to the level that God operates with. And he promises that we will see the results that he gets. In Psalms 25, verse 1 through 4, New King James, Psalms 25, says, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, Oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. Show me your ways, O oh Lord. Teach me your path. Now that's just one scripture, but throughout this Bible, God is showing us that his will his will for his people is for his people to be triumphant. Amen? His will for his people is for us to walk in victory all the time. His will for his people is for us to prosper in every way of our life, in everything, all the time. His will for his people is for us to flourish in life over the circumstances, never under the circumstances, no matter what, at all times. That's God's will. Now God said, my thoughts are not the way you think. My way of doing things is not the way you do things. So we need to get that straight before we can get into this series, amen? God, we submit our will to you, ourselves to you. Amen. The way we operate, the way we do things, we want to line up with the way you do things. We want to see the results that you say we can get. 
We should get. Amen? Well, that's some things that we, we, we need to do in order to put ourselves in this place of walking in this mind that's set for triumph, for victory in every situation, every circumstance. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 says, now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ Jesus. You notice what it didn't say right there. It didn't say, thanks be to God who sometimes leads us into triumph in Christ Jesus. Amen? See, a lot of people will capitulate down to their natural way of seeing things and doing things. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down. God says, always you're led in victory. Always you're led in triumph in Christ Jesus. When you're saved, you get into this place called in Christ Jesus. He said, and through us, through us who are led in Christ Jesus in the triumph, he diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. That means that, that as God is leading us in triumph throughout our lives, in our homes, on our job, in our play, wherever he's leading us in triumph, there's an aroma that wafers off of us that other people get a whiff of. We want to be fruitful. We want to multiply. You got to have the, the smell of God coming off of you. You got to have the aroma of God coming off of you of victory, of triumph, because the whole world is looking for what God has given to each one of us. Everybody that you know and that you don't know in this whole world is longing, searching, hungering for what Jesus has given to his children. This victory, this triumph that he says he always leads us to. Now if God always leads us in triumph, and if that's God's will for our lives and we're not experiencing triumph, we're not experiencing God's will for our lives in this area, then we need to do something with our own way of thinking. We need to make some adjustments here. There's no room for excuses. There's no room for I can, I did, I, I thought. I did. There's no room for not doing what God says that we do in Christ Jesus because he leads us. The only way we're not doing this if we're not letting him lead us. That we're leading ourselves or someone else is leading us. Yeah. Now this is a message that's not for the uninitiated, the kindergartners. And I noticed that we have all saints up in this place. We have regular members or attendees and praise God out there. I don't know who's listening, but if you're not, bear with us. Amen? Because this is not a pedestrian message. This is a message that comes straight from the throne of God. This is a word that comes from heaven that reaches down to bring you up to God's level of victory in this life that God has given to you. God want to bless you like you've never been blessed before. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. You see it everywhere you turn. But God says, I have another plan for my people. No matter what happens on this earth, no matter who's in office, in what political office, no matter what rules, no matter what laws they make, my plan for you is for you to always be in triumph, to live in triumph. Amen? So this is a message that you got to buck your seatbelt, saints, and, and get. And that, that First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, 15, says this. It says, these things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. For, the, for he cannot know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. 16, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? 
But check this out. This is what God says. But we have the mind of Christ. Amen? Now God says that we have the mind that Jesus had. Jesus walked this earth anointed by the Holy Ghost lived a life displayed a life of victory and triumph over every situation and every circumstance. The spirit of God that was in Jesus the spirit of God that knew the mind of God because the scripture says it does. The Holy Ghost knows the mind of God. That same spirit in Jesus is in us. So God is saying that, that there's no reason for us not to be walking in this mindset for triumph if we have the one who has the mindset inside of us. If we allow him to lead us and guide us in the life that God has given to us. The only way we could not get this is if we put him on the back burner and we do things by rote or by habit or by religious ritual and give that credit for being, being led by the Holy Ghost. The mindset for triumph is a mindset that the Holy Spirit directs and guides according to the word of God, exactly the same way that Jesus himself walked and lived. You see, one thing we have to really give attention to and work on more than anything else is our image, the image that we have of ourselves. You see, when our image that we have of ourselves is contrary to the image that God has for us, then we suffer serious consequences, missing out on the blessings that God has for us to walk in. But when our image aligns with the image that God has for us, then we find that the power of God flows through our lives, out of our lives, in every area of our lives. So then, with that knowledge, we should work more on our image, aligning our image up, you do it by giving that word, meditating on that word, praying that word, believing that word, doing that word. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what anyone else says, no matter who you're around, not being ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but being bold enough to believe the word of God because God said it, I'm going to adopt it embrace it. I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to believe it. No matter who laughs at me, who turns their nose at me, who runs away from me, I'm going to do what God says for me to do. I'm going to line my thinking up with what God says about me. Amen? See, we should work more in our image than we do on anything else, including our faith. You know, faith is, is critical. Faith is, is, is what pleases God. It's important to access all the promises of God, and faith works by love but faith would not work in you if you have the wrong image of yourself. If your image is just a mere person's image, you're just a mere human being, Sister Susan's son, or, 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 or brother Jojo's daughter, or whoever, and separate you from who God has made you, then you're separated from the image that God has birthed you into. You might even have a grasshopper image. A grasshopper image is an image that don't believe that God's word is true, that believes your own sense report, that believes your own experiences, that believes what other people have gone through. That's a grasshopper attitude. Believe that you can't be what God says you are because you don't have the education or you don't have the finances or because of some other situation or circumstance that you've gone through. You might have gone to jail and I can't be this because God is not more powerful than what God says. Look at him. Get your image from him. Amen? Amen. And power will flow to your lives like rivers of water. You see, when a believer comes to God, 
And when a person comes to God and become a believer, through faith in Christ, a change occurs. A change occurs. I was talking to Elder Gandhi yesterday. He was talking about some of the people in his, in his family back in the day when he was a kid who were hell raisers in their natural life. And then all of a sudden, they got saved. And they got real saved. Most of them became preachers. I was saying, well, praise God. That, that's, that's usually what happens. You don't have to become a preacher. But in reality, every believer has a ministry. Amen. And so when you come to God, you're not supposed to stay the same way you were when you, before you got to God. God changes you, man. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, you bec all things become new. Old, I mean, all things become new. Old things have passed away. Amen. If anyone be in Christ. Amen. If anyone is Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And that means the way that you are, the way that you, God sees you, everything about you becomes new. A change occurs, amen? See, this change is necessary, and it's the difference between living the same life that you've always known in the natural and the life, the supernatural life of God that God has made available to us in Christ Jesus. There's a change that we have to take, receive. I don't know if you notice or not, but we're in the last days, man. The Bible said in the last days, perilous times are going to come. And I know you, like most Christians, are just waiting. You know, I'm waiting. I passed. I'm waiting to, 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 to the ripe fruit fall off the tree and hit me in the head. And then I know that I can be fruitful. Jesus might break through the clouds any second. Amen. Even while we're standing here. Amen? Amen. And people are waiting. Amen. We need to be like those folks at that concert the other night that I heard on the news. Folks at a rap concert, and they, 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 they're so excited and, 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 and enthused about somebody cussing out people on the stage until they rushed the stage until I think eight people got crushed to death. And here we are got the darling of heaven as the song says the one who's given you everything that God himself has amen every blessing of God he's given to us and here we are barely making it in wouldn't dare sit on the front row and won't even tell anybody else to come in and get what we get this change is necessary saints Romans 12, 2 says that we are to be transformed by renewing of our minds. This happens when we feed on the Word of God as our main source of sustenance. You see, it's the Word of God that changes everything. Amen? It changes everything for you. It changes everything in you. And it will do exactly in you and for you what God himself will do. The word of God. Amen? You see, I don't know, if I, I might be preaching to the wrong crowd up in here. I, might, I, I don't know. I, I, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, help us bring the right person to this broadcast. The right one whose heart is open, who you have drawn to the point of their growth in you, to be able to receive this word that will cause them to move to another level of victory, another level of our, I pray, Lord, that you just move mightily and don't let this word just fall to the ground like your word says, it will not fall without accomplishing what you sent it for to come. Let it manifest itself in somebody's life, Lord. Be glorified in this, amen? You see, saints, saints, The mindset for triumph is the mind of Christ. It's the mind of Christ. It's the mind that Jesus himself has. That's the way he thinks. Amen? And now when we adopt this mindset, you know, you talk to Christians and, 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 and you don't see the fruit, but they tell you they got it. I'm, I got it. I hear from God too. You don't have to tell me nothing. I, I know this. I know. I, I don't, I don't, you know. I don't know why I'm up in here. I'm already, I've arrived already. You'd be surprised how many believers think that. 
They think they've arrived already, man. But let me tell you, we haven't arrived, saints. Amen. Before the throne of God, man, the, the elders and all the creatures, uh, holy, holy, holy. The, the revelation is that every time they say holy to God, they see a new revelation of his awesomeness. And they do it 24-7 throughout all eternity. And God never exhausts his awesomeness. He never exhausts his revelation. So no matter how much you think you know, how you've grown you think you are, we have to be humble enough to know that God can still teach us, that God can still show us some stuff. Amen? You see, I'm finding out, man, that this mindset for triumph will get you over in every part of your life. It'll get you over, man, when you think you can't get over. When your mind and your circumstances just tell you that you're just a mere person. That you walk just like your neighbor, your family members who don't know God, who you can't get to come to church unless we got a tambourine and, and, and five horses running around in a, in a circle doing the huckabuck. And you think you're on the same level with them. You don't know what the huckabuck is. That's a, that's a, that's a southern term, amen? <laughs> but God says, man, he says, I've given you this mindset, and I want you to embrace it. It's going to take an effort. It's going to take more than just listening to a CD. It's going to take an effort of getting into that word and meditating in that word and doing that word. Because, you know, the mindset of, 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 of victory says that you might come in or come to Christ being sick. But the mindset for triumph says what God says, that by Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. Amen? Amen? That, that, that's the mindset. That's the mindset for triumph. The mindset for triumph, you might come in poor. Pastor, I can't give. I can't do this. I can't do My mama, my daddy, my, my grandparents, you might come in poor as a church mouse, as they say. But the mindset for triumph says what God says. Jesus became poor that we might, through his poverty, be made rich. That if I bring my tithe to the storehouse, that he would open the windows of heaven for me and pour out blessings for me, that won't be room for me to receive. That's the mindset of triumph. Amen? Now, you don't care what anybody else says, anybody else does, but what God says is what your mind is set on. Amen? You might come in oppressed. What? Christians oppressed you. Man, you better believe if the devil going to oppress anybody, he's going to try to oppress a Christian first. Amen? Because if he can oppress a Christian first, he can stop the flow of power from flowing through your life. His people, he don't have to worry about them being oppressed right now. He can use them anytime he wants to. He want to oppress you so he can stop you from getting this power to flow through you so that you can help somebody else. Not on yourselves. You might come in depressed. One Christian, you'd be surprised how many Christians are depressed, man. God, God said you might be depressed, but Jesus took away that depression off of you, amen? This depression didn't come from God. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's what my mind says, amen? You might come in mean. I mean, mean as a junkyard dog, amen? <laughs> But the mindset of Christ said, no, I'm still too. Amen. <laughs> that the love of God fills my heart and flows my heart. And I love everybody because the love of God has been shared about my heart by the Holy Ghost. Amen. That means that I prefer others before myself. That I love them with the same love that God loved me with. And so I can't be mean back to you the way you've been mean. Amen. Yes. The mindset of victory, of triumph says that I'm not mean. Amen. You might come in fearful. You might come in fearful. You might be fearful when you come in here today. I mean, I'm scared to talk to anybody or tell them about Jesus. I'm ashamed because they'll look at me like I'm stupid or something. Um, you know, it won't work. And, and I'm, I'm just scared to go, you know. Praise the Lord. God didn't give you a spirit of fear. Amen? But a power of love and a sound mind. Amen? There's no reason to fear. There's a lot of stuff to be fearful of. When you look at what the devil is doing all around this place, that's what he wants you to focus on. He wants you to take your mind off of 
his mindset and put it on what the enemy is saying to you. To get his mindset in you. So that you can walk in what the enemy is trying to get you to think about and not what God is trying to get you to think about. It's important, saints. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As you think, God says, is the way you're going to be. It's the way power is going to flow from you. Amen? So the responsibility, then, to set your mind on the things of God is not the preacher's responsibility. It's not your wife's responsibility or your neighbor's responsibility. Amen? It's not God's responsibility. It's our own responsibility. Amen? Setting your mind correctly is critical if you want to enjoy the full benefits of salvation. The full benefits of salvation includes victory over and deliverance from every enemy, over every situation. And, amen? Philippians 2, 12, 13 says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So God instructs each one of us to work out our own salvation. Work it out. Amen? Work out. It's my responsibility, if I want to eat, to sit down at the table, even cook a meal, but even go to the store and buy something. I'll go to a restaurant. It's my responsibility, amen? But God has provided all this stuff. But if I want to eat, I got to do something. The same thing applies to salvation. Saints. You got to work this thing out. You got to receive it, amen? It's available to you. You got a word. You got messages. You got all kinds of sources. You got to work out your salvation. And salvation is, is, is no excuses. It's full of victory. Philippians 2, 14 15 says this. It says, do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. You see, God has not released every good thing in some people's lives because their mindsets have been hindered, hindering him from giving them, or hindering them from receiving and enjoying the benefits of them. So as we close this first section, something we can do. Colossians 3, 1, 2, 3 says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, which Christ, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. I don't have time to really explain that. But the gist of it is that we have a responsibility to set our own minds. Set our own minds on the things above. The things above is the victory of the finished works of Christ. We saw a movie one day, maybe yesterday, we saw a movie. I woke up and turned this movie on. And before I turned it off, I said, wow, that's, that's interesting. It was a movie, make it long story short. Uh, this, this man was in an accident. And this, this corporation called the Hope Corporation grabbed him, put in a computer chip in his mind. And their purpose was to control him, to give him thoughts, make him buy what they wanted him to buy, do what he wanted him to do. But, but, but there were some, some rebels out there who, who, who hacked into his chip and they rescued him by giving him their thoughts. And he finally came around after they helped him to come to realize who he was and what was happening with him. And I was thinking, this is awesome. You know, that's what the devil want to do with us. He, he get that TV, man, and, and all your negative relatives and all your friends that you can talk negative to. And he programming us and, 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 and telling us what to do, what to think, what to say. Amen. Uh, who to vote for and, and how to do this, how to do that. And we don't even realize it's the devil programming us to do things his way. But God says that this word, amen, this word is what he want us to walk by. 
is what he wants us to think on. This word will not put you in bondage to make you do things that's not good for you, that's not going to prosper you. This word will give you victory, give you triumph over every situation and every circumstance that life presents to you. Now, a lot of people are ashamed of the word of God. They're ashamed of the word of God to the point where you can't even invite a person to church because I want you to come see Jesus. I want you to come hear about Jesus. That's not good enough. I got to have, I don't know why I'm on this, amen? We got to have a... a we're not going to entertain anymore up in this place. Amen? If we ever did, we're not going to entertain anymore. It's time to see some results, saints. So if you think we're going to have to have a special program before you can get your loved ones saved, you might have to spend eternity without them. God's not going to entertain nobody up in heaven. He, 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 he's not going to do it, man. You're going to have to come in because of Jesus. We have to use the same thoughts that God has in order to reach our loved ones. One lady was saying that she, she was so sold out on the word of God. She was so convinced that the word of God was true. She, her mindset was so baptized in the word of God until she, told, uh, she had this, this, this boy who had been crazy and, and living a life of the full of the devil after being raised in church and she walked up on him and, and with the word of God and said you're saved you serve God you will walk in victory and you will honor God and cherish God all the days of your life and that boy was shocked until the point of whatever devil was on him jumped off of him and before he knew it he was in church worshiping God serving God because somebody was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Philippians 4, 8, 9 says, Finally, my brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The Amplified Bible says to think on these things. The things which you've learned and received and heard and so in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Saints, practice what you've learned and received and heard and seen in me. That's Amplified Version. And model your way of living on it, and the God of peace, of untroubled, undisturbed well-being will be with you. In other words, saints, think this way and actually do it and you will see wonderful things begin to happen for you you will create an environment for jehovah shalom himself to be with you the things of the finished works of jesus is the truth honest good report virtuals and praiseworthy things lock your mind on these things and god will bring all good things to pass in your life. Lock your mind on these things. It's not about sitting up in church and, and grading the message. Don't want to hear it. Let me see it. That's what God says. Let me see it. Don't grade it. I want to hear what you got to say. I want to see what you're doing. That's what God says. Think on these things and you'll please God. Show me your faith by your works. By what you're doing, not by what your lip service is. This is not a college class. This is an encounter with the mighty God of all creation. And as we close, this is my dynamic YouTube. In Acts 3 1 9, we need to take an example from the people in the book of Acts who the Bible says were ignorant and unlearned men. But they took note that they had been with Jesus. And when the Holy Ghost came, the Holy Ghost gave them the mind of Jesus. And so they only thought about Jesus. They didn't think about programs, entertainment, coffee, food. They thought about Jesus. The Holy Ghost was their mind. And so now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they 
laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of those who entered the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, said, excuse me, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand, right hand, and lifted him up, and he immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. You see, this man was outside the church. He was looking for an answer to his problem. He thought it was a handout. See, a lot of our people, they think a good song is what they're looking for. They're thinking a good dance is what they're looking for. They're thinking for free coffee is what they're looking for. But Peter, in essence, said, what I have that's going to really help you, that's going to really address your problem more than anything else I can give you is the name of Jesus. When we place Jesus first place in our lives, when we put Jesus as the top priority of our lives, not only on Sunday mornings, but every day, Jesus first, job, anything else, fall in line behind Jesus. Then you're going to see the power of God flows and you're going to see people looking and they're going to wonder, just like they did this man, what mighty power is at work in your life? But you know, you have the mind set for triumph. The mind set for triumph is the mind of Jesus. It's the mind that God has given to each one of us by the Holy Ghost. And from this day forward, saying, God says, if you embrace this position of attitude, if you take this posture of thinking and place it first place in your life, all the excuses will be flushed down the toilet. And you're going to begin to walk in supernatural miracles. The flow of miracles is going to be released in your life until you will not be able to testify of the good things that God is doing before something else good happens in your life. Saints, we're moving to another level. We're moving to another realm. We're not mere men any longer. All defeats and disappointments of the past are in the past. Amen? God said, it's your time. It's our time. If you embrace it, if you embrace it, you ain't got to testify, you're going to have to, it's going to be seen. It's going to be seen, and when somebody asks you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank God for his word, saints. Amen. Chuck, you turn off. Praise God. Amen.